Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. The Xavi Hernandez era has arrived, and the first match in charge was the derby against Espanyol. There was a lot of curiosity as to how Xavi would look to overhaul this faltering side. And in his first match, Xavi scraped a 1-0 win thanks to a Memphis Depay penalty. The XG shows that Barcelona were not dominant, with the chance quality roughly even, mostly due to a penalty. The XG time map does show, however, that most of Espanyol's chances were in a late flurry. But what tactics did Xavi implement? Let's take a look. A quick reminder of Xavi's first 11 in his first match, as he went with the 4-3-3, as you can see on the OneFootball app. Guys, OneFootball is sponsoring today's video, and I have genuinely been using the app for years, and it is comfortably the best free football app around, and you can download it free right now through the link in the description below. You'll get formations like this, stats, news, and more, all customized to your favorite teams and players. Let's first look at Barcelona in possession. Espanyol didn't press particularly high, ending with a passes per defensive action of over 15, so Barca could come out of the first phase relatively easily. And initially, with Espanyol defending in a 4-1-4-1, the Barca centre-backs had the advantage against a solid tree forward, meaning that the pivot, Busquets, could remain high rather than drop deep. But this also seemed to be a conscious decision to keep Busquets high in midfield, as even when the centre-backs were pressed, he remained high. The role of Xavi's free aids may be part of the reason it was essential for Busquets to remain high. In these earlier phases, the Barca wingers hugged the touchline, often spreading out the Espanyol back four, and De Jong and Nico pushed high up early on in the build-up. So, they were well positioned to receive line-breaking passes behind the midfield line. Or, with the Espanyol backline higher at times, we would see Memphis time and again drop deeper, potentially drawing a centre-back. And if gaps had opened up between the Espanyol centre-back and full-back, De Jong and Nico consistently made runs in behind, looking to get on the end of a longer ball. And this did lead to some promising situations. Espanyol were also good at making mid-game adaptations, as they could switch from a 4-1-4-1 to a 5-4-1 with a pivot dropping in between the centre-backs. This would make it much easier for Espanyol to track the movements of these men in the half spaces. In these situations though, Busquets would now have a lot more time on the ball. But the use of the wide regions was particularly interesting. Xavi generally wanted to keep one man wide at a time on either side, so decisions had to be made between the fullbacks and the wingers. Down the left, Alba's great strength is on the attacking end of things, so he tended to push into the winger position. So, where he had hugged the touchline in the initial phases, higher up, Gavi would then move into the half space as he's comfortable as a midfielder. And this would allow De Jong to then operate deeper alongside Busquets to assist him in the build-up. This shape meant that Barcelona mainly played down the left-hand side, looking for combinations to get midfield or fullback runners in behind. And when they did get into good positions, having so many numbers central meant that a lot of people could attack the box to get on the end of the cutbacks. But this light left-hand side overload could drag Espanyol across somewhat, meaning that Ilias was free down the right-hand side. And the right was used differently, as Mengeta is not offensive enough to be a consistent overlapping threat, so instead he was essentially used as a third centre-back. And this meant that the right winger always had to hug the touchline, so when he received, he would now be in a 1 vs 1 situation against the Espanyol fullback, 
and could look to take his man on. We saw this particularly when Ezal Zuli came on in the second half as he attempted a game-high 8 dribbles. And it should be noted that when Barcelona were overloading the left-hand side, Gavi did not stay wide, meaning that the Espanyol left-back was not tied up. So if he stayed narrow, the winger could receive for the 1 versus 1. However, if he tried to get too tight, it left the passing lane open for the winger to attack from out to in. And despite being in good positions high up, aside from the cutbacks, Barcelona struggled to create high quality chances. But this attacking structure with the modified back three and heavily overloaded centre meant that when Barcelona did lose the ball, they could win it back quickly as they were in close proximity to it and could counter press aggressively knowing that they had a safety net behind them. But out of possession, Barcelona were also looking to press high when possible. Whether in open play or from goal kicks, the pressing shape was the same. Gavi would come in off the left hand side to join Memphis as the second forward, meaning that both centre backs were under pressure. Gavi from midfield would push up onto the pivot Lopez from midfield, cutting off that option. At the same time, the right winger remained deep, cutting off the fullback, whilst Alba pushed onto the other, meaning that the pressing shape was essentially a 3 5 2 and it proved to be very effective. Lastly, another interesting thing to note was the speed of the transitions, as when Barcelona won the ball back deep, they looked to release Memphis as quickly as possible, rather than first building up. Overall, Barcelona still have a ways to go to get back to their usual level, and this match showed that a change in manager is not an overnight fix. There is naturally still a lot of Kerman patterns present in this side, but still, it'll be interesting to see what Xavi can do with a full squad and time. But what did you make of this match? Drop it down below. And it is harsh to give a manager a tactical score based on their first match, as they have not had the time to implement their full philosophy. But in this game, Xavi earns a middling 5. Barcelona were quite good between the two boxes, but when it came to the business end on either side of the pitch, they were poor. And if you enjoyed this video, you may also enjoy the FMS Patreon. On Patreon, you'll get early access to videos, exclusive videos, as well as the ability to vote on various polls and so much more. It's a great way to support the channel and it is now cheaper than ever. All you have to do is head over to patreon.com slash footballmadesimple or press the card in the top right or the end card at the end of this video. And a special thanks to my patrons including Loma, Tyler Avon and Efren Perez Pliego. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.